What up, Mewtwo? My name is Cherise. Welcome to Reese TV. Glad that you're here. Star Wars The Force Awakens. This will be my spoiler review. So if you have not seen Star Wars yet, I suggest that you watch my last video. I feel like I'm going to get a whole bunch of hate about this, but this movie wasn't really a good movie. And I watched this movie twice. One with expectations that it was going to be a great movie, and the second time was with expectations that it is a not so great movie. I feel like I should not have to dumb down my thought process about Star Wars in order to enjoy a movie. J.J. Abrams, you are a good director. You made me into a Trekkie. I wasn't a Trekkie before I watched your reboot of Star Trek. I was not. I did not like the Kirk uh, era. I didn't. The only era of Star Trek I liked was with Jean-Luc Picard. That was the only era I liked. And you breathed new life in Kirk and in Spock. And I loved it. I became a Trekkie because of you. And yes, I did not care for your sequel to that. Because it went too close to the Kirk era that I didn't like. It wasn't new. It wasn't fresh. It was the same thing that we've already seen before. And of course my husband liked it because he's a Trekkie, but I didn't like it. That's almost how this movie went. I am a Star Wars fan. I was a Star Wars fan beforehand. I still declare myself a Star Wars fan now. But there was so much in this film that just wasn't original. It did feed off a lot of Star Wars past. And it just felt like, okay, well that's there for the nostalgia effect. But if it wasn't Star Wars that you were picking from, it was Harry Potter. There were at least three scenes that I can say, oh, that's Harry Potter. Like when Rey finds the lightsaber and Maz Kanata explains to her about the lightsaber's origin. That was similar to Harry Potter first receiving his wand from the wand maker. The same scene, just different characters. Snoke was Voldemort with a super mushroom from Mario. Kylo Ren was Snape. There's this one scene in Harry Potter where Snape tries to probe Harry's mind and Harry turns it right back onto him and discovers his nightmares. That was the same thing that happened in the scene where Kylo Ren is probing Ray's mind and Ray turns the tables on him. It was the same thing and it was just like what am I watching here? It just doesn't feel new. And then outside of that, it was being so distracted by Kylo Ren and Rey's parentage. Kylo Ren, his parentage was constantly just dropped every other scene. Oh, I'm going to finish what you started, grandfather. Is meeting up with Han Solo going to be a problem for you? This is Snoke talking to Snape. I mean, uh, Kylo Ren. And of course Han and Leia just spilled the beans entirely and just said exactly that, hey, this is our son. He went rogue, killed all the Jedi. This is why Luke Skywalker disappeared. And Rey? Rey's story was told mainly through the Force. However, you can tell with Han Solo reaction that there is some family connection between he and Rey that we don't know about, but 
it just seems like, okay, well, he's the father that she never had. Okay, but I'm not getting a father kind of feel from him. It's more so of an uncle. Hey, what's your name? My name is Ray. His reaction says, I remember a Ray. Oh my goodness, I'm so happy to see you grown up. I'm happy to see that you survived. Which brings me to my theory that Kylo Ren, though he pursued Ray, trying to kill Ray, he also helped her out. He also helped her escape. My thought process about this was when, uh, his informant told him about a girl that helped BB-8 escape. His reaction to there was a girl makes me believe that he knew that Ray was on that planet. And the only way that he would know that Ray was on that planet is if he actually let her go. But of course, we're going to hear more about this when the second and the third movie actually comes out. There was only one character that actually felt original to this film and that was Maz Kanata. Maz Kanata, <laughs> she is like everybody's mama. When Han Solo goes into this cantina-like place, Maz Kanata calls him out like, hey, you're not gonna say hi to me? <laughs> that is exactly how that one mama is, that one big mama is. And then for her to say, where's my boyfriend? You know, talking about Chewie. That was such a mama moment. And even though there were some things I didn't like about Kylo Ren's character, Kylo Ren was one of my favorite characters in this film. And you know, not to say anything against all the other characters, I feel like the other characters, they fed off each other great. Everybody was relatable. But at the same time, everybody didn't really stand out. You just loved them as a whole. Kylo Ren was the only one that truly stood out in this whole film. Uh, and my main moments that I really loved him <laughs> was during the times of his fits. He threw some fits. And yes, that is not really original at all. It was more like Darth Vader times 1000. It was like the funny scenes with Darth Vader that we really wanted to see more of. And I feel like J.J. Abrams kind of capitalized on that. Um, it was just, it was stupendous. People call him a punk because of how he reacted to things. He is a really powerful guy and very unstable, very much like his lightsaber. So I think that he portrayed Kylo Ren very well. This is a man who is constantly feeling the pull of the light side, though he wants to stay with the dark side. He did a good job. It was a surprise to see that Poe actually lived. There was like nothing to show a Poe living. Even his little brief explanation, it was just like, so how did you live? Where did you come from? How far away from the actual crash were you that you couldn't find Finn? Talking about things that just didn't make sense. R2-D2. And I'm not sure if it was J.J. Abrams or if it was the producer that said, we need to have R2-D2 do more. You know, past that first scene with R2-D2, we honestly didn't need any more R2-D2. R2-D2 didn't make any sense when he finally just woke up out of nowhere. Not even the Force! Not even the Force can explain why R2-D2 just woke up out of nowhere. It would have been better if he just stayed asleep. Ray, who found out from Kylo Ren that the rest of the map is in the archives, could have just come back and told everybody else that the rest of the map is in the archives and BB-8 would have presented his side of the map and we would have found Luke Skywalker. R2-D2 did not have to have more than one scene. 
But what I did like was that this film didn't last so long. Not like the previous Star Wars that will just basically take up the rest of your day or leave you tired because you had to sit down way too long. This was basically under two hours and I definitely appreciated it. It took out all the long dialogue to explain what was going on. It used the force to explain what was going on. Uh, I think that these were smart decisions. I really, I really loved that when the force was used in a very Dragon Ball Z <laughs> kind of way. It was in the final battle between Rey, Finn, and Kylo Ren where Rey is reminded about the force and she just closes her eyes. And at that moment, all I thought about was Goku powering up. I just feel like if somebody can take the final battle of the Matrix series and this scene and put it together, we will have a fairly decent live action Dragon Ball Z movie. We would. Make it happen, Hollywood. Make it happen. <laughs> There were other things that I enjoyed. Like I said in the last video, there was a lot of imagery. In Han Solo's death, there was imagery. The sun that was being drained of its light by the new Death Star was parallel to Kylo Ren and his internal battle. And as soon as the light went out from the sun, Kylo Ren stabbed his father. That was great imagery. There was another bit of imagery that I noticed where it seems like Kylo Ren's development was parallel to Finn's development. Finn got a new name, Kylo Ren got a new name. Finn had an internal conflict, Kylo Ren had an internal conflict. They paralleled in character development and I appreciate that. The last bit of imagery was in the final battle where Kylo Ren and Rey were split apart because of the ground splitting apart and it just gave a visual of their two respective sides. One on the dark side and one on the light side. I appreciated that. As I mentioned in my last video, Harrison Ford returns, but he is more like Indiana Jones as Han Solo. And in just every scene that he is trying to escape or he finds himself surrounded, it just felt like Indiana Jones and not like Han Solo. And perhaps if we actually saw Han Solo development throughout the years that this would actually feel like Han Solo to me, but this just felt like Indiana Jones. I feel like every time that he escaped or did heroics, I felt like I should have heard the Indiana Jones theme music. There were some good parts about this movie, but I'm not sure to truly call it a good movie because I had to dumb down my expectations of the movie the second time around in order to truly enjoy this movie. I heard that J.J. Abrams will not be directing the next two films. I feel like this is a cop-out. I feel like the response from the Star Trek sequel has scared him away from doing any other sequels. And I honestly feel like he shouldn't let that bother him. I honestly feel like he's the next Steven Spielberg. I just feel that potential within him. And I really don't feel like he should be running away from every sequel film. Do the sequel. You don't know what you can do until you do it. And even if you fail, you don't know if you can be better until you continuously do it. Yes, you might get a lot of negative criticism on your way of getting sequels right, but you might get a lot of praise. And you will never know that because you keep on running away from sequels. Okay, and I think that's all I have to say about the Star Wars film. Tell me what you think about it. 
please do not hate me because of my opinion and that my opinion doesn't go with your opinion. Tell me, did you like this film? Tell me, it was there something that you felt like it needed? Maybe originality? <laughs> and leave it in the comments below. Please like and share this video and subscribe so I can see you next time. Bye-bye.